we have to start thinking about this. Um, they've been too strong since EOC launch. Um, it's the same formula um, that the players take to every boss, so we need to start challenging that, we need to start testing that, um, and we need to break the mould of, of players' rotations and, and survivability in boss fights. Hey, what's going on everyone? As some of you may know, I went to Jagex HQ to film an interview show where I spoke to a number of devs about a variety of different topics. Now, that show isn't actually ready yet, but as part of one of the episodes that I recorded with Mod Raman or Kyle, we talked a lot about the Zamorak boss fight, and in reviewing the footage, I think a lot of it works better before the boss comes out than after. So what I've decided to do is we are going to reveal the footage and release it right now in this video. So this is about an eight or a nine minute segment of my conversation with Mod Raman. We were speaking for well over an hour, of course, which will be in a, a full episode posted to the RuneScape channel later on. But for right this second, if you are interested in the Zamorak Lord of Chaos boss fight, this is probably going to be a good one to watch. So without further ado, I hope you all enjoy. As always, all feedback appreciated as this is all kind of pre-release content. And lastly, just wanted to say best of luck with the Zamorak boss fight if you guys are going to be going for it. There will also be a live broadcasted Zamorak race on the official RuneScape Twitch channel hosted by me. So if you're interested in that, I hope to see you all there. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. On the, on the subject of, of power creep, on like a, a broader spectrum, we've, we've sure. spoken on the idea that so long as there is more difficult stuff uh, coming out, um, it just kind of moves the mid game and the previous end game bosses become mid game and they become more yeah. accessible. And that's generally speaking a good thing so long as there is more difficult stuff coming. So you are one of the one of the leads on the Zamorak boss fight. Yep. So just take me through sort of how much thought has gone into allowing or, or creating something that is, I don't want to say power creep proof, but that is difficult enough that even with all the power creep of recent months and years, um, is going to be, you know, a difficult boss fight, or even you could go as far as say the most difficult boss in the, the game. The impossible boss fight in the game. The impossible uh, it will, it boss does, fight. In it does. It does reach. It reaches heights where it is impossible. This one is super interesting because you know you and I have both touched upon um, mainly power creep um, and having rewards that work for years to come. Um, now, one of our main goals in Zamorak is to sort of touch upon that let's let's test the waters um and that's why zamrak comes with an enrage system um we've looked we've um fiddled with enrage systems with telos telos was the first one god was only two um to have an enrage system and then arc glacial came out and that had its own enrage system uh, so we looked at the two of them and we learned from them and players got to 4k arc glacial really quickly um we look back in the day to telos um players were sort of hitting brick walls to where they were they were struggling but and correct me if i'm wrong with the release of telos 4k was never meant to be actually attainable uh, yeah yeah there's a comment in in code um saying hey you know this caps at 4k good luck though with a winky face okay yeah um so it wasn't ever expected that players would ever be able to get there but the one takeaway from being a runescape developer and especially working on boss encounters and this the stuff i I say to all our new devs um, like Modluma and um, Sponge uh, when he sort of came along is never underestimate RuneScape players because you will give them a door and say, hey, this is how the mechanic is intended to be done. And they will find every other way possible to go around, under, over, not through that door. So players will do mechanics not the way you intended. They will always prove you wrong. They are so clever. So you need to sort of always bear that in mind. And that's, you know, they, they did achieve 4K Telos, even though we internally thought it was impossible. So we try and do less of, even though I literally just said, hey, high in rages, this is literally impossible. It is. Um, but that's because we've lifted the bar from 4K up to 60,000. So you want it to be virtually uncapped. That's, that's 60,000 is an uncapped. arbitrary yeah. number that is picked but just to are, say no one's getting there. Yeah, there are, there are certain mechanics in the fight that scale to a point where players' maximum life points literally can't handle that. The players will figure out a way. The main, I, the main ideology behind pushing way beyond 4K is one, it will get to a point where it's theoretically impossible. But two, it gives players a platform. 
It gives players a platform along with the boss high scores. So we're able to then see how far players can really take it, get a good understanding of what points are they starting to fall off at. And us internally, that, that gives us a, that's the power level that players start to, to fall through at. That's the, the average of the high scores and rage. So that's maybe where we can aim some future content where we want to go, hey, we need something mega, mega hard. So we have a benchmark to, to sort of go up against. Um, but it's also going to be amazing to really see how far some of our players can take it. We have incredibly talented people who know the combat system way better than we do. And I expect to see them sort of at the top of the high scores. But also it's nice for new names to come into the fold, new legends to be born. The fact that I can go onto the, the website, the RuneScape's high scores, click refresh, and I'm like, who's Billy041272? And I mean, I think personally, that's the that's one of the things with the Zemrock fight that, I mean, I've been playing it all week pre-release, but one of the things I'm most excited for is exactly what you said, because in my head, I have an idea of who the top PV armors in the game are, and I know kind of where I fit in, you know, an echelon below that and, and whatever else. But the idea that is baked into the game it is a part of the game now to be able to see these new players because there's a real chance. There are some people that have never broadcasted their PVMing, exactly. they're not in a PVM clan, but they are absolutely phenomenal. Exactly. And uh, just to see those names and to get to hear those stories, I think it's going to be fascinating as well. Even if you're not engaging with the boss, to be able to follow it and watch it. And, and to me, it sort of recreates a similar, a similar feeling to Seasonals in, yeah. I believe, 2017, where like that was where Couchy really put himself on the map as... I am the best RuneScape player yeah. in the you world. You had players like Sadden, who you know no one had really heard of until yeah, players starting to push Telos. And hopefully with this and groups and, and different things, we're going to bring a lot of players into the limelight. But these are the players who have really learned how to use the power we've introduced to them over the years, gives them that platform and allows us, again, as I said, to benchmark and, and really figure out where are we at What's next? What's to come? What style dominates? What things do we need to tweak, change? Um, and yeah, I think it's going to be probably one of the most successful bosses we've ever done, just because of longevity. And in years to come, when we release, let's say, a new codex, players might be able to finally push past the the mechanic yeah. that or the mechanic with X and Rage that has been blocking them for X amount of years. And then we can see how far they can even push it further. Yeah, it's almost, I mean, I don't want to say it's power creep proof, but because it goes uncapped fairly infinitely, I think you get to a point where, yeah, any any new release that gives you power will still be relevant at that yeah. boss. And whether it's the top people getting an extra five in rage, or it's, you know, someone who's stuck at 80 in rage getting up to 100, yeah. I think there's a there's a really, really good longevity relevancy there that uh, I don't think you see in a lot of other bosses. That's the thing, like it, like this new reward might only be able to get them to eke out an extra 10 to their high score best, but that's an extra 10 that they didn't have beforehand. Yeah. So there you um, go. they'll be in the top spot. With relation to making a boss that is, you know, potentially not power creep proof, but I mean, you use the term impossible at a certain level of difficulty. I think with the Arch Glacier, there's a lot of you know playing around with certain mechanics that scale up with Enrage and, and certain ones that don't and, and, and figuring that out. But how do you manage defensive abilities because uh -huh. of how ridiculously strong they are? Because to me, they're in a weird spot. Most players don't use them, but as soon as you know how to use them, you can now no food every single boss in the game. Yeah, no, defensives, um, they're my personal biggest gripe with the game. Um, they've been too strong from the get-go. Um, if we weren't to do something about them, then it's the same formula for every single boss. Um, a attack comes out, a player will do disruption shield and completely nullify that. A attack comes out, a player will use resonance and they will fully heal and mitigate that entire the entirety of the damage. A big set of attacks comes out, a player will just pop on barricade and that's it. They've got 18 seconds of in invincibility, right? So we have to start thinking about this. Um, they've been too strong since EOC launch. Um, it's the same formula um, that the players take to every boss. So we need to start challenging that. We need to start testing that. Um, and we need to break 
the mold of, of players' rotations and, and survivability in boss fights. So where Zamorak now starts to push damage through that, um, he also layers his own flavor on top to even further push, push through that. So players that have just been doing the same thing for X amount of years will now have to come up with ideas and methodologies to break the cycle, break the mold, and figure out how to push these high rangers because they're going to be tested.